ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good today. So I wanted to come on here and do, you know, one or two videos or whatever. Now, this was a topic I had posted on my Instagram the other day, and a lot of people had things to say. If you guys do not know, the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, her and the state of New York decided to launch a hotline, okay? And this hotline is not to, you know, report the coronavirus. It's not to, you know, if nurses are going through a lot, if they're stressed, if nurses, you know, feel like they're going crazy, they can call this hotline and talk to people and get help. Oh, no, absolutely not. The hotline is for Asian Americans who feel that people are doing any type of xenophobia or, you know, racism towards them. They can call this 1-800 number and vent to them and, you know, get, get you know, reassured that everything will be okay. But 11, there is a growing call to protect people from possible hate crimes that might be inspired by where this virus originated. Gilan Malamed tells us about the new resource the state is offering. Ashley, here locally, the Buffalo Police Department tells me it has not received any reports on coronavirus-related hate crimes. But across the country, we've seen stories of Asian Americans being harassed in relation to the coronavirus. That's why New York's Attorney General's office is launching a new hotline. The hotline is meant to combat coronavirus hate crimes and xenophobic rhetoric. Attorney General Letitia James says there have been numerous reports of Asian Americans being harassed and physically assaulted in New York this past week. Writing, quote, this pandemic does not give anyone an excuse to be racist. The AG's office says it's working with local law enforcement. They are the ones able to punish hate crimes. President Trump referred to the coronavirus as the Chinese virus on Twitter last week. He put forward this message of unity today. It's very important that we totally protect our Asian American community in the United States and all around the world. They're amazing people and the spreading of the virus is not their fault in any way, shape or form. This is the phone number and email address to report hate crimes to the AG's office. They can now, I find this very, very funny. And I also find it funny that they use a black woman to, you know, be the face of this movement, this 1-800, you know, call if you're being mistreated, if you're an Asian person phone number. You know, it seems like a lot of other races are racing with the capes, you know what I'm saying, to cape for other races. But I ask her as a black woman, where's the number for black people? I'm like, did I miss that number? Did it not come to my phone? Because I've never seen where there's been a number for black people to call when, when we face racism and discrimination in this country. You know, so I find that very funny. I've also, you know, I asked a lot of my Latino friends, have you guys ever been given, you know, phone number to call? You know, being that there's a lot of xenophobia and racism thrown at y'all due to, you know, Trump making little smart remarks about the U.S. border and things like that. A lot of my Latino friends said, They've never received one either. And neither have my Muslim friends who face a lot of discrimination and abuse, especially after 9-11. They weren't given a number either. So this kind of leads me to believe that the U.S. definitely looks at, you know, Asians and the Asian culture as the model minorities. That's what, you know, I've heard Asians use that word before as well, that they are considered the model minority. And I really find that to be true because now that they're facing discrimination and xenophobia and abuse, um, there's a 1-800 number for them to call. Now, let me say this. I don't agree with any of that. And I said this in my Karuchi Tram video. I don't agree with racism. I don't agree with xenophobia. I don't agree with anything. I don't agree with judging somebody based off of their skin tone, their phenotype, and how they look, okay? That's not okay. I would never stand and say that that's okay, especially being a black woman who has been called everything but a child of God on social media, okay? So let's keep that real. What I find very funny is why the mainstream media is tiptoeing and they don't want to use words, you know, that's going to piss off China and going to piss off the CCP and the full force of private enterprise, and that's the best we can do right now. We all as a country got dealt a bad hand by China. Uh, Peter, that is just a waste of time to say that. I'm going to leave it there, Peter Navarro. No, hang on. We're just what? trying to get our hands around the... No, what? Peter Navarro, Why is that's that a waste it. We're out of time. time say, say we're, out of, we're out of time, and that's just... Okay, that's ridiculous. good to talk. Peter Navarro, come thank back you anytime. so much. What I find very interesting is what's going on in China now. And I hit on this in my Karuchi Tran video slash podcast, but I wanted to hit on this more because I'm like, okay, well, is it getting better? And from what I'm seeing from a lot of people overseas who are contacting me there in China, it's getting worse. So I find it very funny that in America, 
you know, when people of Asian descent are being treated unfairly, America's racing to make them feel included, to make them feel better, to denounce it as they should. They should denounce the xenophobia and the racism and the ignorance. But meanwhile, in China, it's basically applauded. It's okay. Their government is not denouncing this. Now, I posted this the other day because, again, the CCP pissed me off. And a lot of people need to realize that when I say China, I'm not talking about all the Chinese people. I'm not even talking about really the people of China because they're a reflection of their government. They've been so brainwashed. They just regurgitate whatever their government puts out there. So I, I can't even be mad at them. But my thing is this. The CCP cried racism, cried xenophobia when President Trump even hinted about banning travel to the United States from China. When they were hinting that in February, there was all this outrage, all this uproar from the international community, all these cries of xenophobia. And then what's funny now that China supposedly has the coronavirus under control, which it doesn't. They're just saying that because now there's new reports coming out that they're refusing to test people in Wuhan. So like I've been telling y'all, do not get gassed up by these numbers that the CCP are putting out. They're, they're the same ones who lied about the virus and how many people were infected in the first place. So how can you guys go to them to seek truth? But that's a whole nother video. So now back to my point. What I find very funny is that now after all the complaining they did, all, all the countries they accused of xenophobia who didn't want people, you know, coming to their country from the epicenter, Wuhan. So now what's going on is this. China will ban entry to all foreigners, including non-nationals with valid visas and resident permits from midnight on Friday in a move to curb the numbers of imported coronavirus cases. The other measures announced by the foreign ministry include reducing the number of international flights and limiting the capacity on board to 75%. So that is what's being reported now from the CCP. And I find that very, very funny that now they want to block people who have, you know, the correct papers, permanent residency and all that stuff. Into, they want to ban them from coming into the country. What Now, what's even worse, what a lot of people don't know, the majority of people trying to come back into China are people who are phenotypically Chinese. These are people who are living in Germany and, you know, Dubai and other countries. And so now that the coronavirus is spreading to those countries... और हमारे माशरे का हिस्सा हैं जो चाहते हैं कि आप अपनी जिंदगी तंदुरुस्ती से गुजारें kindly stay home avoid gathering and stay away from everything that puts you and your family at risk with our wishes to everyone to be safe and they're getting word that China's cases have dropped. Now they want to go back home. Okay. So that's why a lot of people are now running back to China for all y'all who keep commenting, who wants to go to China any damn ways? A lot of people want to go back to China because they're hearing from their government that, you know, they basically can contain the virus. So why would you stay in Italy as opposed to going back to China? Come on, y'all use common sense. Okay. So now. Um, what's happening is that once those people come back, the ones who look phenotypically Chinese, who are of Chinese origin, uh, they just have to stay in a 14 day quarantine. Okay. So they have to be quarantined for 14 days. And the problem is this, when you're quarantined in China, this is not being paid for by the Chinese government. You are in charge of paying for your own quarantine. Whereas when all those people came from Wuhan, Remember, though, the, the, the second group of people, not the first, because the first ones, they just let them roam freely through the U.S. But when the second group of people came is when they started doing quarantines. And remember, they were quarantined in different cities and they were quarantined for upwards of 14 days and tested. They were given food and drink and entertainment and Xboxes and cable television. And who paid for that, you might ask? The government, the U.S. taxpayers paid for these people who were quarantined. But in China, absolutely not. If you're coming back to China, you and only you are responsible for the fees. You have to keep yourself quarantined in one of 11 hotels and you have to be there for upward of 14 days. And the cost per day, the cheapest, most rundown hotels, they cost $300 per night to stay. The more luxurious ones are 1000 per night to stay. 
but most people may not have that type of money. The people who are allowed to stay in those quarantine places are people who are phenotypically Chinese. Everyone else is being turned away and being told, we don't allow foreigners here. Foreigners cannot come to this hotel. So now you have a bunch of foreigners who happen to come back before this ban and they're being put out of hotels and they're literally on the streets looking for places to stay. And no hotel, if you do not look Chinese, if you are not Chinese, they're not letting you in. So if that is not the example of xenophobia. I don't know what is. If they were, imagine if they did the same thing here in the U.S. The world would be in an uproar right now. The world would be upset. How dare they turn people away because of what they look like? How dare you not give people a hotel room and a place to stay when they're paying their own money? So I'm going to go ahead and show you some video. And the saddest part is the people who are flying in from China who left when everything was going on. Remember, they bounced. They went to all these other countries and possibly spread it. Who knows? But now they're coming back. They only have to wait 14 days and they're good. As long as they're Chinese, they're good. They can walk around, eat wherever, do whatever. But the people, the foreigners who stayed in China, who waited it out, the black people, the white people, the Latinos, the people who stayed in China, who either didn't have any money to leave or who had businesses and family in China and they decided to stick it out, who stayed under quarantine for damn near, what, 90 days? Some of them apartments were welded shut. They went through hell. And now that China's starting to open back up and open up shops, these same foreigners who stood there and stood in solidarity with China, now when they go and try and get food, they're being serve food in dog bowls and saying you eat outside, but your Chinese family can come inside and eat. Oh, your wife is Chinese and you a white man. You sit outside your Chinese wife and your Asian child can come in here and eat. Why, why can't we go in? Why cannot, why can't we go in? Because they don't like black people in. Oh, he just said it in Chinese. We don't like black. My boss told me not to let black. He said it. My family is inside eating lunch because they are Chinese. They can eat outside, but now I, I need to stay outside because I'm a foreigner. See, maybe you can give me a ball. First, I was sitting outside next to the trash because they didn't let me inside, but now they just gave me a chair outside so I can sit. So my husband is giving me food. <laughs> Thank you. So this is what bothers me. I, I really don't care about them creating this 1-800 number, but if they're going to do it, create it for all races, create it for everybody. But what bothers me more is that America's walking on eggshells when it comes to China's responsibility in all of this, basically causing a, a worldwide global pandemic. And we're here walking on eggshells, trying not to offend. Meanwhile, in China, they have absolutely no problem offending. They have blatant signs in front of their shops saying no foreigners allowed, no foreigners allowed to eat here. Go back to your place. And they're spreading rumors that this virus was caused by foreigners. But if anybody here, you know, in any type of position points out that this virus started in China, CNN's cutting them off. They don't want to hear it. So do you see the hypocrisy and how people of other races are treated in China versus how we treat people here who are from China or who are Chinese American. I think that's the saddest part in all of this. So I don't know. I just want to, you know, create a discussion. 
This is not to knock Chinese people once again. This is not, you know, I'm not xenophobic or racist. But the truth is the truth. And if you can't handle the truth, once again, like I tell y'all all the time, this channel is not for you. I'm not here to sugarcoat the truth and I'm not here to make people feel good. It's just what it is. While we're sitting here creating 1-800 numbers and shaming people, you know what I'm saying, for their bad behavior as they should be shamed. Meanwhile, in China, that's not happening. They're allowed to carry on with their xenophobia and their racism. And it's disgusting. And that is the difference to me. Okay? In China, it's acceptable. In other places in the world, it's unacceptable. And until China decides to call out the racism and the xenophobia... You cannot force me to sit here and, and boo-hoo and champion somebody else's plight when you have black people in China and white people in China and other races in China being mistreated by the same people who are accusing everybody else of xenophobia and racism. How ironic. We try and put a travel ban in place. You're xenophobic. You're, you're, you're racist. You're trying to mess up the Chinese economy. China says, okay, we're getting better. We're on the up and up. Y'all can't come here. You guys are banned. Don't even bother coming back to China for months. So now it's not xenophobia and racism. It's like, you can't make this shit up. You, you just can't make this up. It's funny how we here in America hand in a lot of stuff with political correctness and kitten gloves. Meanwhile, in China, they don't give a damn. <laughs> they're doing them. And they're putting their people first. And they don't care about the foreigners and their feelings and how they feel and whatever else. And, you know, it's really sad that it's gotten that bad. It's gotten really bad. They went from being victims and suffering from the pandemic to now turning around and blaming the same people in their country who had nothing to do with this virus in the first place. The whole situation is really unfortunate. I think a lot of foreign people, I think this may be the final straw for a lot of foreigners living in China. And I think once they're able to, they're going to get the hell up out of there. It's really sad what's going on right now. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. How do you guys feel about Letitia James creating this phone number for Asians to call in and, you know, state their plight and their problems? Meanwhile, there's no phone number for any other race in America. And then how do you feel about what's going on in China and how they're treating people, especially people who weathered the storm with them, and now they're treating them worse than second-class citizens? So let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you thumbs up the video. Last but not least, don't forget to hit that bell. So that way you can be down with the notification squad. So let me know your thoughts on this entire situation. All right. Deuces.